One way that many landscape photographers improve their images is by using a technique called focal length blending. I'm Austin James Jackson. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome as well. Super excited to have you guys back. In today's video, we are talking about all things focal length blending. As you're watching this video, you might be wondering, what is focal length blending? Uh, and then once you figure out what it is, you might wanna know how to do it. We're gonna be covering all that in today's video. Let's go ahead and jump right in there. First thing is first, I wanna explain exactly what a focal length blend is. Now a focal length blend requires you to take multiple shots which you are going to blend together later. So in that regard, it is a photo composite. If you're a photo purist, if you're a wanna get it in one shot kind of person, you will not be able to do this. I just wanna let you guys know right now. Additionally, this isn't a technique that I use very frequently in my own work. Every once in a while, I'll give it a go. Um, but I know it is something that a lot of other landscape photographers are using. So I wanna show you guys what it is nonetheless because it is a really cool technique technique and it's something that will help out on a scene like this one that I am shooting right here. Essentially what a focal length blend is, is think like a focus stack where you're blending multiple images, but instead of focusing on different spots, you are actually zooming in or zooming out and you're blending multiple different focal lengths. This is gonna be really helpful for scenes like this one here where we're shooting something really, really wide uh, and our subject is maybe far away, or maybe it's not really that far away, but when we have our wide angle lens on, you know, we're at 16 millimeters, 18 millimeters, 14 millimeters, our subject is really small in the frame. So this technique allows you to blend that subject that looks very small, make it a little bit larger. I'm gonna show you guys how to do it in just a second. Now this technique isn't too difficult if you know how to focus stack, this is basically the same thing. You just have to look out for a few more things. Let me show you guys exactly what I'm doing for my focal length blend here. I will show you guys what we're shooting uh, and what we're going for, give you guys some tips. And then after I shoot it here in the field, we're gonna jump over to my office where I'm going to edit the images. So I'm, we're going to ultimately come up with a photo that is focal length blended. So I'm gonna show you guys not only how to do it in the field, but also in post-processing. Let's go ahead and jump right over. I'm gonna set up my camera on the scene and then we'll keep rolling after that. Okay, so I'm set up here and one thing that you're gonna know notice when I show you the image on the back of my camera screen. I've got these flowers scoped out. That's kind of the foreground of my photo. Uh, and then I have this little tree thing over here on uh, the left side of the frame, or I guess it'd be the right side for you. Uh, and the problem is that tree is ugly. It's distracting. I don't want it in my photo. So how I have this framed out, I do not have that tree in the image. Now, this is a really important to note because when you're doing a focal length blend, you need your midground to, you need there to be a lot of space in the midground so you can get rid of a lot of negative space. It'll be an easier blend if you have a lot of space, which is why this image works great because it's just kind of boring, uh, plain sand, nothing exciting. Uh, and you want to cut out anything that is in the midground that's really distracting, like this bush right here, uh, because that is going to be something that is going to make it a huge pain to do a focal length blend. So, um, Obviously shooting this video, I included the flowers and I included the tree or bush or whatever you wanna call that. Um, but in my actual photo here that I'm taking for the focal length blend, I don't have that included. I just have the flowers. Let me show you guys what I'm looking at and how I'm gonna take the photos on my camera. Okay, so I've got my subject lined up here. You can see how my subject of the frame is like on the right side. That's okay, because we're gonna focal length blend it and bring it back a little bit more towards the middle. Yes, it's a composite, um, but I, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it. It'll be a little bit more complicated that way, which will be nice as well. Essentially what you wanna do is take this just like a focus stack, um, just so that we have everything in focus in the field. So I'm going to select my flowers in the front. I'll do another focus point in the mid ground and we likely won't need all these images, but I just wanna grab them just to have them. Uh, you can see I'm at F9. I'd recommend anywhere between F9 and F11 in order to take that focus stack. Then once you're done, you're simply going to zoom in. Now you can just zoom in like that, but it might move your subject off. This is nice to have with a zoom lens because I don't have to swap lenses, but if you do have to swap lenses, it's not a big deal. Essentially, uh, you don't want to change your focal length a lot. Like you would be surprised at just, this is a 17 to 28, at only 11 millimeters of difference, it makes a huge difference. Um, I don't want to try and blend my 17 millimeter foreground with a, you know, 65 millimeter uh, background. It's just not gonna make sense. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit, just like that. And then I'm going to frame out the mountain. I'm gonna put it, or not the mountain, the sand dune, of course. Uh, and I'm gonna put that right in the center. Again, you could zoom in more, but I'm gonna show you guys, you really don't want to or need to zoom in more. That should pretty much do it. If you wanted to zoom in just a little bit more, you could, but uh, for the most part, like 
anywhere like 10% more zoom is probably just about good enough. So now I will take a couple images there um, and I wanna get one with the mid ground in focus. And I think that's looking pretty good. And that's really about all you need to do in the field. One thing that I would recommend is you wanna take your images at the same exposure values. So take them back to back and don't adjust your settings in between because you want everything to match up so that the luminance values, like the brightness of the image matches and you don't have to mess with it in post-processing. If you do shoot it at a different time or at different settings, you can fix it, but it just takes more time and it's more difficult and you don't wanna do that. So make sure you nail your settings, you keep them the same um, and then just upload them to Lightroom. Then we're gonna jump over to my office. I'm gonna show you guys how to blend these together in a way that looks really seamless so that you will not be able to tell that I've used this technique. So let's go ahead and jump right on over into my office. All right, here we are. Upload your photos to the computer. Then we're gonna jump straight into Photoshop. So load your two images into Photoshop here. If you're doing a focus stack, do the focus stack before you do this. Um, but then essentially you wanna load your two different focal lengths here into Photoshop. You can see I've got uh, this layer here, which is our background, our 28 millimeter layer, and our other one, which is our 17. So we wanna throw these two images together. Now, like I said, I understand that the uh, mountain, the, the dune here rather, it is way off to the side. I'm gonna center it though, um, which again is creative choice. Uh, obviously that's not how it was in the field, but um, I wanna show you guys how to do that so that if you are doing a little more complicated blend, that you can kind of see how to do it on your own. So for a comp like this, what I wanna do is actually grab the um, rectangular marquee tool or the rectangle selector is what I like to call it. Um, you can hit d M on the keyboard and it should come up. If not, uh, click on the three dots down here and find it in the list. And just grab from the top of your photo. Make sure you select everything um, from the very top and start dragging down. Drag down about as far as you want to blend, which for me, is probably about right there. I wanna find a spot that's gonna be seamless to blend, which as you can see in here, because it's low detailed sand, it's pretty seamless. So I'm gonna be happy with that selection there. Then we can go ahead and apply our layer mask here. You can see now, before and after. So it's starting to look pretty good. Now we can do a little bit of refinement here to make this look even better. Um, first thing being, if you wanted to adjust this around, move it to the left a little bit or warp it or stretch it or anything, you could hit control T on a Mac. That's command T on a PC and right click warp and you could move it over. So let's just say I wanted to center this a little bit better. I want to drop that down a little bit and I could adjust this around until I, until I'm happy with it. It's a little outside of the scope of this particular video, um, but that's how you would do that if you wanted to go in and make some adjustments. Do that before you do this next step here, which I'm about to show you. Hit enter once you're done. If you don't wanna do any warping, just totally skip all that and don't worry. Now, when I zoom in here, one thing that you'll notice when I toggle this is it's kind of a, you can tell basically that I've done this because there's this line here, even though it's not very detailed, you can still tell. So we just wanna do a little bit better job of blending that in. So I'm gonna click on my layer mask here. I'm gonna grab my brush. We're gonna make sure it's black and white is selected here. If not, just click these this little button here. Go up here, 0% hardness. Size of the brush will be dependent on how what you're trying to do, but um, you can adjust the size up here by dragging it. Or what I like to do actually is hitting the buttons that are diagonal to the delete key, the opening and closing bracket. The opening bracket makes it smaller, closing bracket makes it larger. This will allow you to adjust the size of your brush. Now you're just gonna zoom in and you're just gonna paint here. And essentially we are either painting back um, if we're painting with white on this layer mask, we're painting back some of this 28 millimeter layer. If we're painting black, we're painting it away. I think for this particular image, I wanna paint it away. I think I'll have a little bit easier of a break point on this sand dune here. So I can just click and drag some of this in and I'm just clicking through. We can spot heal that out, so I'm not worried about this right here. But you ultimately just wanna find a place where the blend looks pretty good. 
And if you didn't want all those bushes there, you could get rid of it. But you can see you kind of have to walk the fine line of exactly where do you want your blend to change. And you can do this for a long time. The less junk like this that you have in here, the easier the blend will be. So if at all possible, I recommend avoiding a lot of that. And I'm actually okay with this bush. I'll probably uh, spot heal that bush out of here. And you want to make sure that you avoid like leaving stuff like this where it's partial opacity. You want to just get rid of all that just like that. And you could go in and touch this up by brightening or darkening it. But for the most part, I'm pretty happy there. If you do find that there, like it seems like it's a, this back image is a little bit darker, which is weird because I shot them like right back to back. But if you find that's the case, go ahead and hit your adjustment layers down here. Go ahead and open an exposure. Hit this down arrow so it only affects this top layer. And then you're going to adjust this so that it matches a little bit better. You can see about a third of a stop matches me a lot better up in here where the blending is taking place. And you can see in other spots like here, I didn't do a good job with the mask, so I can just go in and touch that up with my black brush, get rid of that, and just like that. So now you can see how we went from, we'll put this in a folder here so you can see. We went from this image here and we did a little focal length blend just like that. Now again, you could have done this by zooming in even more, but it gets more challenging to do the larger the delta between your two focal lengths are. Thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Really hope that it was helpful for you. If it was, be sure to leave a like and a subscribe. I'm posting weekly videos in order to help you guys understand and improve your landscape photography. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I think you're gonna like it here. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Austin James Jackson. We will see you guys next time.